Okay, we got a Mayor McBeagle, and he's a dog, and so what's mm-hmm. he sound like? And I'd look at a picture of him, and he kind of looked like the Wizard of Oz, you know. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's not, not, not rocket science. science. Not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's not. 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 not rocket science. It's not rocket science. <laughs> Gosh. Blast off. Welcome to Not Rocket Science. In this episode, we're so excited to be interviewing voice actor Bill Farmer. He's the voice of Goofy. I just did a little impression of Goofy there. Um, yeah, we're going to be interviewing him uh, all about Goofy because he was the voice of Goofy and many other characters we've grown to love. Aren't you excited, Anthony? I am. I am very pumped. Much. I am very excited. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I mean, um, I I've known Goofy ever since. Uh, yeah. Uh, our college days. It's a surreal. <laughs> Wait, what? I went to college with Goofy, the actual. You did? Yeah, yeah. I went it's... to Toontown College. <laughs> 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 wow. That's I don't know why I did that. Cool. I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I just got excited. Uh, yes, I'm so excited. Goofy, that's what are happens, you kidding? That's what happens when you malfunction. Yeah, I know. That It's going to be so great. We're going to uh, ask him a lot of cool questions yeah. about himself. Yep. About himself as Goofy. In honor of him, I'm wearing a Goofy shirt. It is so Goofy. Yeah, oh, it's, it's Goofy on there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, oh, I'm that. very excited. It's a surreal moment because he's one of my all-time favorite characters. Um, yeah, I uh, I have a huge collection of Goofy T-shirts that I did not bring because I didn't want to freak Bill out. Smart. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah do, but but do you uh, feel uncomfortable wearing the shirt in front of Goofy a little? No, bit? I think it's kind of fun. It's you an honor good. of him. Yeah, it's an honor. Not a, yeah, because yeah. that, that could be a, like some people would feel differently but i think it's a good move i think it's good to honor like yeah i'm honoring him like if you go to the concert you wear the t-shirt of the band you're watching why not yeah exactly or you're meeting goofy wear the goofy can you have him sign that that's pretty fun i might that's a good idea i might but yeah sign I, my I, my I, uh face and then i'll tattoo I, it i have a huge collection of goofy t-shirts so awesome. i would like to share those with you all right now here they are Sometimes the snow comes down in June. Sometimes the <laughs> rain comes around the moon. Don't you? You have some goofy shirts you'd like to share as and well. And now I'd wanna... like to show you some goofy shirts of uh, me, of uh, my goofy shirts. This shirt is goofy, yes, indeed. Look at this shirt I really have. That was beautiful. And now we're back. Yeah. <laughs> you see the tears? I have tears. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in awe. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be interviewing Goofy. And uh, did you want to kind of tell people, uh, give them a little reminder uh, there, uh, if you want to look up at the teleprompter and just kind of tell us tell us what this show is. Mm. What is this show? Me? <laughs> yeah. I talk about the guy behind me. <laughs> Uh, Toon <laughs> University. Um, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Yeah. Gosh, 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 I sure will. This is how Goofy used to talk in college with me. Gosh, each episode, Maddie and myself will learn something new from our seasoned professional. Whatever, whether it's a Goofy actor, a history professor, a firefighter. We've had florist, we've had jugglers, we've had anything you could think of, even a Reiki person. And and, and we're going to have so much more, because <laughs> after all... It's not uh, what, Anthony? Gorsh, I don't It's not remember. rocket science. It's not rocket science. Bill Farmer is a phenomenal voice actor. He's voiced Goofy, Pluto, Yosemite Sam, Sylvester, Horace Horsecaller, Foghorn, Leghorn, and more. He's incredible, and he's here. He's here with us now. Thanks. Uh-huh. Gosh. Hey, Gosh. Bill. <laughs> hey. Welcome. <laughs> thank thanks you. For, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. 
Um, it's it's such an honor and a pleasure to be interviewing you. To be oh honest, my God. Yeah. And oh, to meet it's, you. it's my yeah. pleasure, and uh, thank you yeah. for wearing the yes. appropriate attire here. I should have worn a goofy shirt myself. No, no, but, it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I was actually gonna bring my collection of goofy shirts, but I didn't want to freak you out. No, no, that's totally fine. <laughs> but yeah. I I collect goofy shirts. One of my things I collect. Um. So, yes, thank you so much for being here. Sure, um, you're welcome, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was ta- oh, I thought he was talking to me. But thank He's you for being here for me. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of yes. course. It's such an honor. So, so um, how did you get into doing voices? Like, what was your first experience oh, my doing gosh. voices? Um, probably, when I was a kid, I was just enamored with uh, cartoons and, and movie and you know, just anything Hollywood. I grew up in a little town in South Central Kansas, and there was no outlet for anything theatrical. You know, just nothing out there. We had wheat and tornadoes. <laughs> That's about all wheat we and had. tornadoes. <laughs> Very exciting. And and uh, <clears throat> but I always loved going to the movies. I loved watching the cartoons and stuff. And I just started, you know, doing the voices. You know, and I I think the earliest ones I remember really were the the Looney Tunes. You know, with yeah. uh, Mel Blanc, and he was the only guy I knew that did voices. He's the only guy that had his name in the credits in those days. So, you know, I'd run around the house. Oh, brother, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> I see there, that boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> and I'd run around the house oh and God, do that, that stuff. So cool. And uh, <laughs> a lot of the live actors too. I'd see the old John Wayne movies and stuff. And well, mom, let's have some green beans for dinner tonight. You know, and, <laughs> and uh, my dad would look at me and say, something's wrong with him. So, you know, <laughs> so but it was just kind of for fun. You know, nothing. I never thought that it'd be a, a career. And uh, in high school, I kind of got put up at pep assemblies because some of the impressions I did. So I kind of think, well, if I'm going to be pushed in front of people, I better write some stuff. So I started writing a little bit of, you know, some bits to do. And this can continued through college where my degree became broadcast journalism. I figured that was as wow. close to acting as I was ever going to get because Hollywood's a million miles away. Did that for a few years, wound up in Dallas. And um, probably the day that changed my life was March 17th of 1982 when I went to a comedy club in Dallas called the Comedy Corner. And they had, I went the week before on a Tuesday night and they had like an open mic night where anyone could do stand up and uh, just a five-minute set. So I said, well, yeah, I ought to try that. And so I wrote a little routine, went up, and the uh, house comic who's gone on to a lot of claim, Bill Ingvall, with the, uh, like, um, uh, you know, with uh, Jeff Foxworthy and the country, what, what do they call it? But they've done movies together and everything, and he made it big. He was the first one said, you know, you, you ought to keep doing this. So That's I awesome. kept doing that every Tuesday night. Which stand up is rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. There's no pity laughter. You're either funny or you're not. And <laughs> uh, so after probably a half a year of doing that, I started going on the road as a stand up comic. And wow. over the next few years, I did that for about five years until, on the advice of an agent, I was able to get to do commercials in Dallas. They said, well, you ought to go out to Hollywood and see what you want to do. Well, you know, hey, if I never give it a shot, I'll never know what happens, and I yeah. knew it was a long shot. But I came out to Hollywood in the uh, summer of 86, and about five months later, my agent that I was able to get just said, do you do any of the Disney characters? And I said, yeah, I can kind of do a you know, Mickey, and uh, my Donald's bad, but I, I do a pretty good Goofy because he was my favorite Disney character. Mm-hmm. And uh, gorsh, <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> wow. And out of about 1,100 people that tried out, they liked mine. And uh, so since January 23rd of 87, I've been the voice of Goofy and Pluto, which uh, wow. it was a show called Disney's Doggone Valentine. I got to do both in that, and they're still hiring me. So <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's how did, amazing. How yeah. did you feel when you first went into the studio as Goofy? Were you, like, really nervous that first day? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, what's happening right now? Yeah, because I had to loop an old Goofy cartoon and add a new line of dialogue, and I'd never done that, you know, yeah. where they show you the movie and then beep, beep, beep. Oh, the and then beeps you go. are hard. Yeah, and so I'd never done that in my life, and... <laughs> Uh, so it was terrifying, and I, I, what did I say? I said something like, I put the foot 
I put my foot on the accelerator and I'm out of here quick. So it was just <laughs> one sentence. But, you know, and I was hoping that they liked me because they don't hire you for, like, you're, you're the voice forever, you know. No, sure. it's just for that one job. I didn't know if I'd ever get hired again. And about yeah. a month later, they hired me for another one and then another one and another one. And now it's coming up to around 4,000. So, you know. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> After 36 years. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's amazing uh, that you did that all from the start of stand-up, too. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, did you do uh, impressions in your act? Yeah. Is that kind of what you yeah. did? Yeah. I had kind of two acts. I had one with impressions and some without because some of the... Uh, microphone setups that I had in the clubs were so bad, it was like... (laughs) So I had a a non-voiceover routine if they had really crummy microphones or if I had a cold or something like that. And uh, But a lot of impressions, and that's kind of what I learned. But that was probably the best training I ever had. I didn't know I was training for this because you learn how to get up in front of people and not worry about them. You have to overcome stage fright and fear and all of that stuff and just do it, you know. And so it's great training. You learn how to get a laugh and stuff and and which is important when you're in the booth because you just have a script and you don't know how it's going over. What were some of the impressions you were doing for your stand-up? Like, well, as I said, you remember uh, kind of your, yeah, a lot of Western ones in the day. Western, in those days, yeah. they were a lot. I like the John Wayne. And Walter Brennan A lot of characters. Yeah. I used to do uh, Mr. Haney on Green Acre. An exciting voice it is. And uh, oh, a bunch of other ones. Would you would you be like, here's an impression, or would you kind of work it into like your everyday life? Yeah, of, like, I'd, I'd with, do that. Uh, yeah. you know, in days, I do Johnny Carson doing the, you know, the, the Karnak thing that he did. And the answer is. The answer is Donald Duck. Oh, my God. And the the question, what do you say to a Disney character during a drive-by shooting? Donald Duck. (laughs) Those kind of crummy jokes. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's so good. And just anything that I could kind of pick up on and thought I could uh, write a, uh, you know, a joke for. And uh, but it came in real handy with uh, all of the voices I've done in Hollywood here. For that's, sure, that's amazing. Did you uh, when you first moved to Dallas? Were you a broadcaster, or like at a radio station? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Or a um, news. What was your first radio gig? It was a little town north of Dallas, yeah. uh, called Bonham, Texas, a little 500 watt AM station, country station. And, uh, of course, I, I let on the country accent, and I do all those kind of things. Oh, my and gosh. I'd, I'd bring in characters, and I started just playing. They didn't care what you did. they just play a few records and do <laughs> the commercials and whatever else you want to do. Just make people listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started uh, just coming up with stuff, and I'd, uh, I'd have uh, – well, in the day, there was uh, Wolfman Jack, who was a big DJ across America, actually. Oh, yeah. And – Oh, yeah, baby. He had a wonderful <laughs> voice like that. Bill, it's great to be here on your show. Yeah. People, hey, Wolfman's on our station, you know. I didn't know about copyright or anything. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah, I did that in uh, uh, Bonham, Texas. Then I moved to Frederick, Oklahoma, little town, back to my hometown in uh, Kansas. And, uh, um, you know, just did that. And then there wasn't any money in it. So I went back to Dallas, and I... Uh, because I was also a chief engineer, I had enough electronic experience that I became their chief engineer, but I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we got a new transmitter in uh, Kansas, and I was looking at the schematics, and it was showing all these red areas. And it said, caution, death on contact with these areas because of the voltage. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I said, God. you know, I ought to learn something about this. Yeah, I might so I went read. back to uh, electronic school for about nine months to learn enough about electronics I could actually be at an engineer and uh, I figured that would also help me get jobs in radio but uh, the 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 uh, the stand-up took over really and yeah. I, I quit all the other stuff to go full-time into stand-up that's awesome it is awesome that's I feel so like a cool. lot of people did that like uh, I think radio is a really great yeah. start and it's like perfect for stand-up because you really have to develop a voice and you have to speak uh fast like uh, like if you ramp right. up songs you have to like get the the weather out and blah 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 and, and i think it really does help with stuff like oh, that oh yeah i'm really uh, uh hyper about 
trying to be on time to things, and that was because of radio, because sure. it was to the second, you know. You'd come <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. if you're coming on at noon or 6 a.m. or whatever, you better not 6 a.m. and 5 seconds. Mm-hmm. It's like, boom, you know, you wow. just got to be to the second. And I still, I'm like... Going to the airport, I drive my wife nuts because it was like, you know, I, you know, we got, oh, we got a lot of time, and oh, well, what if the four oh five is, the, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm a little uh, hyper about that. Uh, speaking <laughs> on that, are you, are you goofy in real life? Like, oh. are you pretty goofy? I already yeah, know oh, that. Oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> I sure, sure am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, there's a goofy curse. There is yeah. a, what I call the goofy curse. Anything really stupid that I do, I blame on goofy. That's great. And uh, I need that. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. I'm well, blame here, you. Here's an example. <laughs> here's an example. I was um, <clears throat> putting up Christmas lights once, and I was just in sweats and everything. So I'm up there on the ladder, holy, holy, you know, and putting up the lights and everything. <laughs> I stepped back down and I backed up, and my foot hit a, a pipe for the sprinkler system. And I fell backwards into some rose bushes. <laughs> oh, God. Now, that's goofy enough. Sure. And I could blame that on goofy. But the first rose bush grabbed my sweatpants and yanked them down. <laughs> and I fell bare butted into the second rose bush. <laughs> oh, my it's God. It's like the Three Stooges, you know? <laughs> what it's the like, heck? that's the goofy curse. And that uh, has plagued me ever that since. That is such <laughs> a cartoon. <laughs> Fall. It is. It is so it, cartoon. Like, it really was. Is this, it, 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 that doesn't happen unless you no. play goofy. Again. No. I don't oh know anybody God. that's fallen into a rose bush with oh a pants gosh. falling down. And a, it, it sounds like Mr. Bean too. A little. Yeah. Mr. It really Bean does. Curse. It's yeah. like uh, I was in a studio once and I had a Coca Cola, and I was going to put it down. Yeah, I was in the control room. And I put it down, but I put it on halfway on the table. Yeah. It started to fall. And I grab it, and I hit it, and it spun <laughs> over a 96-channel audio board. Oh I mean, it was God. like, you know. Oh, God. It ain't cheap. Hey, no, they're like 100000 bucks or more, you know. And the engineer's like, ah! <laughs> Was that goofy, your first day? Goofy. No, no, that was not my okay, first day. Okay, good, good. But just stuff like that happens, yeah. and I blame it on the, the curse of Goofy. Yeah. So. I like uh, that. That's, that's awesome. You, you are one... And uh, you're the only person that can do that curse. And uh, get away it, with it. I'm just <clears throat> like, I'm so sorry I ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still, people often ask me if I've ever had to like uh, try to get out of a traffic ticket or something like that with the voice. Yeah. And it hasn't happened yet. I haven't been stopped, but I'm waiting. Really? You know, uh, yeah, well, if, if I ever get stopped, Gorsh, officer. Well, I'm goofy. What do you expect? You, you know? are a good driver. <laughs> goofy is a good driver. You heard it first. Yeah. Oh, my. You've never been uh, pulled over. Oh, I've been pulled over before, but I never thought at that time to uh, to it. be ready with it. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Nervous yeah. Or something. yeah, you're a terrible driver otherwise. Yeah. You, you just didn't do the character. <laughs> I know. So, But I'm ready now. So. Um, wow. Uh, so... Um, you're kind of talking a little bit about sound gear there yeah. for a second. Um, what's your? Do you have a setup at home? Do you have a, oh, like yeah. a booth? Like especially what? during um, uh, COVID, you yeah, know, when you couldn't go into the studio and everything, it really didn't slow down animation at all because yeah. you just had the right equipment. So I have a, a Neumann your, yeah, U87. Your setup? Yeah. I have a Neumann microphone into a Rupert Neve uh, Shelford channel strip, and my son's an audio engineer anyway. Oh, that's and terrific. a professional drummer. So he's got all the equipment, and I hire him to be my engineer, so I don't have to worry about levels and anything. Um, oh, that's so good. So all I've got is my script, and he comes over, and, uh, you know, we just do it via a Zoom call. You know, there's a monitor on the wall, and I'll see the director, and then we go yeah. over, and I just do my lines. The problem with that is, you know, you're sequestered. You're kind of by yourself and everything. So I, I got to figure out, like, okay, how did Mickey say this? What what Because I'm not hearing him. He hadn't done his lines yet or hasn't oh, wow. done them. M- Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> and so. Mickey um, Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry well, he I, asked that. Was... that. <laughs> I am so sorry. I did not know. <laughs> Who else yeah. would it be? I Goofy mean, was on the Yankees. Mickey yes, Rorick. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Rorick. <laughs> and, but you got to really know that kind yeah. of stuff in your head because, okay, you just see Goofy says, um, Gorsh, Mick, let's go outside. Well, 
what if he's like floating in a balloon 50 feet away and <laughs> you'd have to say, come on, Mick, let's go. And, yeah. uh, and it also, is it like, let's go out and see the, the, the weather or is the house on fire? You never know. So you'd say it differently depending on what the scene is. So I rely on the director for that kind of stuff, but we just go line by line, but it's not, um, I, until the show's out, I have no idea what they did with it. Really. Well, so you don't feed off of the other actor, especially no. when you're doing in your that's own booth. The, that's the hard part. Sure. And uh, w- what kind of things do you do to warm up your voice? Like, are there s- a s- a specific tricks you do? or? Um, yeah. Oh, sometimes when I'm going to a place, if I'm going to a studio, it's just sing along with the radio to kind of get out the morning phlegm and all of that. And, yeah. Oh, you know, just do little notes and stuff or practice yeah. the voice. Now, Goofy, I've done it so many times, I, I don't have a problem. Any of the other characters that I haven't done in a long time, I'll kind of listen to, and usually they got a, um, a reference. Like, what did I do last time when I did that? Voice? Yeah, yeah. I did a show called Amphibia, which is on Disney, uh, uh, Disney Plus, and and his voice, uh, a character named Hop Pop, sounds like this. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like the second time, I what did I do the first time? I have no yeah. idea. So they played it back. Oh, that that voice. Okay. Right, right. And that uh, kind of refreshes your memory. Yeah, totally. It, like it's like a click or something in yeah. your brain. Yeah, that's that's incredible. That's so cool. Um, did, you seem like you're going to ask a question just now. So did you. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I, I will have a question. Sure. Uh, have you ever, so like Foghorn, Leghorn, yeah. Maddie likes to say that name three times <laughs> yeah. fast. Characters like that, have you ever had to do like Foghorn, Leghorn with into a different character? Like speaking to, like you doing two characters at the same time, like having a conversation. Oh, yeah, a conversation. Uh, that would be t- uh, very tricky. Yeah, thing. generally now we don't. Back in the old days when we'd record on tape, uh, yeah, wow. I'd do them sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, Horace had a voice like this, kind of like Jim Backus. <laughs> and uh, it's like, you know, oh, Goofy, what's going on? Horace, howdy, Horace. You know, yeah. I could go back and forth. It's not as easy. And now with Pluto, but Pluto's very plosive and loud and row, row, you know, yeah. barking. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we'll do all the Goofy lines generally. And then we'll go back and get all the Pluto lines because sometimes after a, a long session with Pluto, and I'm sounding like the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, you can do any voice. How many? Yeah, how many voices do you think you have in your toolbox? I have no idea. I've done hundreds Probably over the hundred, years. Yeah. I've done uh, just on Mickey and the Roadster Racers, a series we did. I did, I think, about thirty-five to forty different characters over the the. Uh, the show and you know like i'd be the mayor or something okay we got a mayor mcbeagle and he's a dog and so what's mm-hmm. he sound like and i'd look at a picture of him and he kind of looked like um, the wizard of oz you know pay no attention to the man behind the curtain you know <laughs> so i kind of did that voice and uh, we played with it a little bit and uh there was one there was like a character you know um uh mcbilly and uh he was a goat Man, so what do you what do you make a goat sound like? What's a goat yeah. sound like? And for some reason, it came out like Vin Scully with, <laughs> with a, ble- a bleeding kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mixed a goat and <laughs> well, and Vin cool. Scully, and you got Mr. McBilly. What? When you do the goofy voice, are you very expressive with your hands? Like, oh yeah. Like, are you very? I was wondering. Yeah, about you got to get into you, it. Do you and get like you just kind of feel it as you're talking like this yeah and that was probably the hardest thing about voice acting is that it's not voice acting it's voice acting the Mm -hmm. acting's the important part sure and to get the emotion because the emotion drives the words out and you can be loud with no emotion and it sounds fake you got to have that emotion to push the words out in a way so first thing i have to do i gotta get bill and put him over here on the shelf so he's not messing up my my reads mm. and inhabit the character as fully as I can for just those seconds and pop into it and pop out of it. Yeah. And cuz I can't worry about what the people in the control room are doing or saying, so I got to get into it, you know. And yeah. so yeah, you use your hands, you do that, the body everybody yeah, you does emphasize. That. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. I was just I was curious about that. 
Um, that's awesome. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, the the Goofy movies, they're, yeah. they're incredible. What was that experience like working on those? That uh, originally, the original Goofy movie was supposed to be a Goof Troop movie from oh, really? the television series, Goof oh, Troop. Okay. They had a DuckTales movie after the series DuckTales, and they were going to have a Goofy uh, Goof Troop movie. But we actually we even recorded some on it, and nah, it just wasn't flying. It just wasn't working. So they kind of went back to the drawing board and decided, okay, this is going to be a buddy buddy picture. And um, ultimately, it became about a recording session that was like about two and a half years, on and off. They'd write scenes, they'd nah, scrap them. They kind of formed it as we went along. Oh, wow. where a lot of other movies where you go in and it's like yeah, two days of recording and then maybe right. some a day there's already up. a script yeah right. yeah and so this was kind of over a long period of time and there were a lot of hits and misses and scenes that didn't make it and everything but what they came out with was i think a brilliant movie and to this day it's probably the number one thing that people ask me about yeah um, it's beautiful it it's great out, yeah 1995 and uh, last year, they came out with a Goofy Movie board game. This is 28 years after Whoa, the movie came out. That's great. And it's still popular. It uh, yeah. amazes me. But there was a screening recently, right? In, yeah. Yeah, in Hollywood or, or somewhere. Yeah, I was out of town or I would have been there. Too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's that's incredible. Do you have any, an extremely Goofy Movie? Yeah. How, what was that experience like? It was totally that? different because now they had the kind of the characters defined, all of this stuff. So it it was less than a week of recording on that. Oh, wow. Whereas the first one was you'd come in, you'd do, you know, like one day and then like a month or two later you'd do another day and about 40-some days and it was like, you know, three days on the other one. So it was boom, boom. They had it down Let's just go through the script and get it, and uh, so it's a totally different experience. Wow. That's wow. Do Do you have any uh, moments in your career where you've met a fan or something, and they've they've shared a story with you that's really moved you about how Goofy has affected their life? Oh yeah, there's always moments that uh, two that come to mind. Really, uh, it's like probably the one of the biggest celebrities I ever got to meet was Muhammad Ali. Wow, Whoa. in it's Florida. A big one. And I got introduced to him at a Disney event, and the I told him, oh, you know, what do you say? You just, oh, I'm a big fan. You're amazing and, and all this stuff. And I do the voice of Goofy for the Disney company. And he goes, well, do you ever talk to kids in hospitals? That yeah. was his first words. And, yeah, I've done that with, uh, like, uh, kids that want to talk to Mickey or Donald or Goofy on the phone and phone it really comes alive because yeah. it's one on one. Yeah, and he said, "Man, then you're my hero." And shook my hand and I I I've always remembered that. It was an wow. incredible experience. And um, speaking of talking to kids in hospitals, we had one where this was actually Mickey and I I um, Mickey and Minnie were talking to a little girl and she had leukemia. And her mom had said, yeah, she's kind of resisting treatment. She's not really into it and everything, and it's not looking good. And so Mickey gets on and, and says, you know, uh, well, uh, Pluto, when he uh, he's sick, he takes his medicine, and he feels a lot better after that. And I, whoa, whoa, you know, and I'm with him, yeah. right? See, he's fine. And just from that statement, about three months later, we get a letter from the mother that said that the kid went into remission oh my because oh my gosh. of her whole attitude changed about taking the chemotherapy and stuff. Wow. And that always, that just really cemented the idea that this is a lot more than just doing a funny voice for a character. Exactly. Sure. This has impact on people's lives. And so I never take that for granted. Uh I realized that there's a lot more to it than just going into a studio and laying down some lines. Uh, and I always try and keep that in my head. And meeting people that it, it matters to people. It, it does, does matter. Yeah. And yeah. even at uh, Comic-Cons now, people will come up and, oh, you know, I, I couldn't talk to my dad until, uh, you know, we saw a Goofy movie. And that kind of cemented our relationship. It became our movie. Or now it's been 28 years and... 
they'll say, you know, when I first saw it, I, I uh, identified with Max's situation and yeah. everything. A stupid dad who's, oh, God, my dad's goofy. And now I relate to Goofy because <laughs> I got a kid, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it changes over time. Wow. But uh, it's it's really great to hear from the fans that uh, that really enjoy these characters and that there's an importance to them much more beyond than just doing a funny character. Well, it's cool that uh, you said that uh, because these characters are not one-dimensional. And, right. And in order to be an actor uh, within these situations, obviously you have to bring like emotion yeah. and, and the feeling. You have to uh, have something that's more than just like you being a funny voice. Uh, how do you, do you like walk around the neighborhood and, uh, maybe not as goofy, but like do a voice, like when you're ordering coffee to kind of get yourself, uh, Into that the emotion feeling. if you're still, not anymore. Yeah, Cause yeah. I've trained myself with all of these times, the first few years of doing goofy, it was difficult. I had to really go over the scripts and think, how would goofy say this and stuff, but I've done it so many times. And I've become so close to Goofy and put a little mm -hmm. bit of me into the character and stuff that I just know how to do it. So yeah. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And not especially with the Goofy well, or Pluto. How about like outside of Goofy, like developing a character? Because it is development. Yeah. And uh, so what are some of the exercises maybe? Or you just, you, you, you seem like such a genuine guy. So I guess maybe it just all comes out within all your characters. You don't really well, need to like, um, do anything, any, you know. Yeah, I, I really had to cool. articulate that for the first time when I started teaching kids and, oh, okay. and, and people who want to get in the business. And basically, it's um, creating a voice is part of it, but it's not the main part. It's the personality of the character, and it's his emotional base and what's he like. Goofy's, uh, you know, a happy-go-lucky guy. You know, he'll fall off a mountain, he'll dust himself up and keep on going. Donald would blow a, blow a gasket, you know. True, true. <laughs> so different characters, so you have to have that base character and figure out what, what makes this guy tick. And uh, But as far as doing voices... Um, I had to articulate it. How do you do voices? And uh, like, uh, basically, there's three things. There's what your vocal cords do. There's what your tongue does and the situation that you're in. And those are the three things. I call it my SAT yeah. <laughs> thing. Situation, articulation, and tone. Mm -hmm. Like the tone is if I it was what your vocal cords do. You can do a high little voice. You can do a deep voice like okay. that. And yeah. I'm just using my regular voice, but uh, a very deep one. Yeah. And, and yeah, if I, yeah, now yeah. that's what my vocal cords do. So let's say I take a deep voice like that and okay. I put on an English accent like that. Yeah. I got me a character right there. Already. Uh, already. Oh, wow. Or if I did a New York one, I could do a New York accent with the same tone. I got a different character, kind of like a gangster kind of thing or sure. whatever. <laughs> and uh, or I could, uh, uh, you can kind of do a swallowed thing uh, like that. And Swallow. if you uh, kind of take that, that is uh, right here. Right there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's say you pitch it up a little higher and uh, then articulate a little bit more and you're getting into the Kermit the Frog sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's so incredible. you kind of build those voices by those three steps, really. Yeah. Oh, that's and cool. just practice it. And so that's what I do in the car. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. The, the car characters are the best place to do yeah. it. Even yeah. Even though people might think you're just some crazy guy talking to yourself or anything, if you're developing <laughs> something in the car, nobody's going to disturb yeah, you. Yeah, yeah like, they leave like you I'm alone. Developing. They don't leave you alone. But it's fun to, uh, yeah, they're a good yeah. place to find voices. You know stuff. what I found so interesting watching you do all those uh, that round of characters? Every single one of them had a, a personality or, uh, through that, and it was a character. It wasn't you doing a voice, which I think is a big difference. Like if you were doing like a British accent, yeah. you weren't doing that. You were doing a character that had like a life to it, yeah. which right. is so cool. Like it's so hard to do that. I mean, When I first came out to Hollywood, I took lessons from a guy named Dawes Butler, who was a great voice actor and did all the Hanna-Barbera things like Yogi Bear, Huckleberry so Hound, cool. all of the about 40-some oh, wow. characters. And he was the first one that really 
instilled in me and his students that, no, it's about the acting. It's about the personality. The voice, you know, that'll be there. Mm-hmm. The, the, it's pushed yeah. out by the emotions. So if you can get the emotions and the inner life of the character, that exterior life and the voice will just kind of come easier. Now, it's it, you know, I just always had a propensity for doing mimicry and uh, uh, coming up with, you know, copying voices, which made it easier. But it's kind of like, uh, I was like, it's like uh, you can explain it easy. Doing it's hard. It's like playing golf or something. Yeah. You know, okay, you hit the little ball into that hole 200 yards down there. Right. Okay, you can say it easy. Doing it's a <laughs> sure. hard Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah, and you can and you can even <clears throat> learn and learn and learn how to say it and put the ball in the hole, but that emotion, some I don't think everyone can learn that. I think some people have it, some people can. That's a that's a very hard t- a thing to be yeah, able to I do. Mean, like it's kind of a character. It's very anyone cool. can get better at it. Uh, sure, but it's like it's, some people just kind of have a propensity. I mean, you know, you see, uh, you know, any athlete I think has a just a built-in thing. They can get better and they practice all the time, mm-hmm. but and they do get better. But they also have this innate ability that most of us don't have. So yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, like Michael Jordan yeah. was very competitive. Right. He was so – and you have to have something in there with playing yeah. a lot. You he have had to have this that natural drive. talent, but he developed it through just practice, practice, practice. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's in, that's incredible. Um, what what advice would you give voice actors that are just starting out? Like what, what would you say to them? I know you've offered some advice, but yeah. what, what would you kind of – the most well, important thing yeah. is uh, take acting lessons because it is acting. Whether there's a camera there, whether there's just a microphone, whether there's nothing there, it's acting. And uh, I, I like stage acting. That's why I think uh, stand-up was so important. Yeah. Sure. Because, you know, you go into a booth and you see some guys through a glass wall and, you know, there are talking and you don't know if they're saying this guy really stinks can we get someone else and they're probably saying no i wanted I, you know i wanted a thousand island on my sa- <laughs> on my salad <laughs> yeah, you never know what they're saying so you can't let that get to you when you're on stage uh, you get so much feedback from an audience too on okay yeah. i got a big laugh on that line i said something right so let me t- listen to it and i used to always tape my shows so that i'd uh, you know, listen back, well, that didn't work, and or, what did I do? Can I rewrite that? Can I say it differently or something? And you learn. You learn from the audience, and you don't get that in the booth. You have to already know that. Mm. Yeah. That's so, great. Well, acting, acting. Acting lessons. Act, acting and stand-up. Acting. Yeah. You still do stand-up, correct? Or do uh, you do Once in a while? great while. Yeah. Oh, I, cool. It's more on the uh, uh, personal appearances kind of thing. Um, I was in on the Disney Wish the new ship uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, and doing a um, kind of a live live performance for the D23, which is Disney's fan club in uh, Orlando, uh, with Jody Benson, who's the Little Mermaid, and uh, uh, John, well, well, I can't, what, Michael, I can't remember his name. Anyway, he plays uh, uh, the genie in Aladdin on Broadway. And wow. so these Broadway stars, and you learn from them, too. I mean, they're out there. They know how to perform. Sure do. And uh, so, yeah, I do those kind of things more than just uh, once in a great while I'll do a stand-up routine, but not too often. Yeah. Do you but have, you like, a do. set time that you have? Like, do you have 15 minutes or, or how many? What's your – do you have, like, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, or how long is For your stand-up? stand-up routine. Oh, a yeah. stand-up – Generally, 20, 20 to 30. Oh, cool. You don't want to do a stand-up. Um, a show with three comics is ideal. When, when yeah. I started, it was always the opener, the middle, and the headliner. And if you go much beyond an hour and a half, hour 45, audiences start wearing out. It's yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's uh. like... Now, you know, you, you see a movie, and if it's like three hours, I'm saying, come on, can't you get it done in two hours? <laughs> right. I get a little yeah. tired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of yeah. you peak, and, and you start losing it a little bit. Same yeah. with stand-up or any performance. I think an hour and a half is about the max to really do anything like 100%. that. 100%. I, I feel like a lot of that is 
like a show booker <laughs> is like I want to let in as many performers perform as possible. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, make them happy and the audience. Uh, two hours. No. Yeah. Hours that was good. When I yeah. started, we'd <laughs> sign up in the afternoon to do these, uh, you know, this Tuesday night amateur hour, and we each got yeah. five minutes. And you'd get in line, like, in the afternoon to sign up at 7 o'clock because you didn't want to be the guy on, okay, you're going on at 1215. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Oh, oh, yeah, the audience is gone, and it's like an empty room. Have you ever seen people like waiting outside the Laugh Factory or the comedy store? Oh, I've store? been those guys. Yeah, they just sit out there like heat of the day. Remember yeah. we'd walk by those oh, guys? Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Man. It can it's be dedication. brutal. Yeah, it's dedication. <laughs> so, um, what are you? What are you working on now? What's kind of your What's your future look like? What are you focused on right now? Okay, well, yeah. I'm I'm still doing a lot. Hey, I'm I'm now I'm seventy years old, so Heck it's yeah. like uh, seventy years young well, in still, my opinion. It, it keeps you. Going. It keeps you. Yeah, you got to keep doing something. Uh, and all my friends say, "Well, why don't you retire?" You know, but why? It's the funnest job ever. Yeah, and as long <laughs> yeah, as you're they yelling want me to at do me this, to retire right now. <laughs> I, I want to be happy and work. <laughs> right. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, I've got a couple of series on Mickey Mouse Fun House, which is on about every day. And uh, um, I record like once a week on that. We got a couple other ones that are just, I can't talk about yet, but right, uh, right. that are coming in. We did, actually, they released a, a promo for it. Uh, October 1st, it'll be. We did a, um, it's not, not CGI, but a, a stop motion animation. Uh, a Halloween special. Oh my God, I love that and, already. And uh, yeah, it's like those old uh, Rudolph the Reindeer uh, Ooh, kind of that oh, style cool. of an- Stupid Buddy Productions that did Robot Chicken is yeah. doing the animation. Wow. And it, I saw a little preview of it on online, and uh, it looks great. And I think it's going to be out on October first somewhere, Disney Channel or I don't know, streaming or whatever. So but, uh, cool. That's um, cool. And so we did that, and we're working on a couple of other ones too. And so. Yeah, uh, they're keeping me going. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any cons coming up? Any conventions that people can look out for? Um, I do, and if you ask me what they are or where, that's okay. On, where am I going to? I'm going to like to Michigan. I'm going to. I've done a lot of them. Do you have a um, website or or, or your yeah, Instagram I have, where um, people can? Track well, if you? anyone wants to ever find out about uh, doing demos, I got a. a uh, tunehouse.com is my company, T O O N H O U S E, uh, dot com. And uh, my son kind of runs that because I'm. Well, what do you, you mean know, by doing demos? Like, uh, like for uh, up and coming actors. Oh, that, really? Like, you like teach that's them? Like your, well, you produce a, a demo. With uh, you, though. You yeah. show them how to do it. Oh, and yeah. cool. And we write the scripts for them and everything, and we oh, do it from start awesome. to finish. And it's an important thing. It's like a headshot for a model, you know? Yeah. It's just. I what know gets all that, that model headshots. Oh, boy, I've done so many of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. The glamorous <laughs> life that I live. Um, well, that's awesome that you do that. That and, is awesome. Uh, yeah. I get to work with my son on that, and he's great. at. He's a much better editor than I am. And uh, That's so well, Where cool. can we find him, too? That'd be, uh, he sounds like such a cool guy, like drums. Well, yeah. And, um, uh, he's got his own website, yeah. uh, drumfarmer.com. Yeah, we'll I love and that. And you can that see out. that. His, that's uh, awesome. Some of, uh, he, he does a lot of... Uh, drumming around and everything so he's had some great i mean it's funny in hollywood you get to work with guys like one of uh his um uh drum teachers is right now ringo Starr's drummer out on tour Whoa. and everything and, and marilyn manson's Whoa. drummer was oh he taught God. he knows everybody yeah, yeah. He, he, you can do that in la that's oh what's so gosh. cool about being LA out here so kids cool. from kansas don't get this yeah you know? that's true <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, just wheat and uh, tornadoes, That's right? it. Uh, yeah, that's wheat and tornadoes. <laughs> well, Bill, it's been such a pleasure to so people can find you on Instagram. Yeah, uh, at, at Goofy Bill. Okay. Yeah, awesome. at Goofy that's Bill. That's on Instagram yeah. and Facebook with all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. You've had a huge impact on my life. Uh, Goofy is one of my all-time favorite characters, and... Uh, I collect Goofy shirts. I told you. Yeah, and I love the one they, you have on. They yeah. bring me so much joy, and I've I've had a lot of health issues growing up, and just going on eBay and finding Goofy shirts is like my biggest joy, and wearing them, it just makes me so happy. So, thank you, Bill. Oh, my pleasure. Just like my pleasure. Goofy he is... was my favorite growing up too. Yeah, probably so... why I practiced the voice. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's a great character. Yeah, and thank uh, you so much. I get Bill. to hang around with a good character. Jeez, yeah. Totally. And I appreciate everything you do, and I appreciate this interview. I've learned so much from you, and, and I really like uh, you. Will, uh, will you let me move into your home? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Free of rent, I hope. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if we can do that. You got a couch or something down we there? We do have a couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got goofy blankets or is that... Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. That'd be cool. All yeah. right. Roomies. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Well, thank you, Bill. Yeah. Thanks so oh, much, my friend. You're the best. So nice thank to meet you. you. Yeah. Take care and... Uh, uh, gosh. Gosh. <laughs> Maddie, yeah. that was fantastic. Bill's like such an inspiring, cool guy. It like, was it was incredible. It was a very powerful interview, in my opinion. Just so he's so he has so much knowledge and just seeing him morph into those characters that you know we grew up uh listening to, it's just like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Right? Oh, and and also just uh and just how he did that too, which is so uh, effortlessly. so amazing, effortlessly and and with uh, full uh, full fledged characters in front of me, not just blank voices and not I, like I, a I was, funny voice. Yeah, nah, like he was like the character was in the room. Like, yeah, it felt he like was very. He is very uh, very talented and nice and a good guy. I yeah. mean, he. Seems like he is goofy, and it's so cool that he teaches as well. It's like I want to take his class. I know, like I want to take his demo class. Like I want is... us to take some classes from yeah, him. Yeah, we we'll should do we... something. I just want to yeah. keep hanging out with him. As all. I know, He's maybe just I'll a... go to his poker. Don't you think he'd have a fun poker night or something? <laughs> he'd probably he'd be like fun bowling or something. I feel like he'd be a he has fun. <laughs> Right, right, yeah, yeah. Like the boys over. Imagine a bunch of like voiceover actors playing poker, and they're all just doing their <laughs> oh my voices. God, like that'd be amazing. Ooga! You know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, how amazing would that be? <laughs> that would be am- That would be. That's hilarious. I love that. I idea. wonder if they do. They're just epic. That yeah, they should definitely do that. Yeah, I I. Uh, it was such a. So is Goofy pretty much your favorite character too? Growing up or. Who who are yours? Oh, I like Goofy. Yeah, uh, yeah, Goofy's real great. When I was growing up, also like that uh, Goofy son. I like Goofy's uh, Pluto. I like, like Pluto. all that stuff. Yeah, Max. Yeah, Max. I like Max Hedrick. Yosemite too. Sam is really funny, and that's so cool that he played. I'll him say, I'll say. Is yeah, that what yeah, he did? Yeah, yeah. I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm just doing yeah. the voice. I'm you sorry. You did. You did good. You Thank did you good. so much. Um, yeah, that was that was incredible. Thank you so much, Bill Farmer, for stopping by. And, oh, Matty, yeah. he left. <laughs> no, no, he's here. There's Thank no you, there. Bill. Thank you, Bill, for. Oh, whoa, oh, he did leave. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. He's gone. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yosh. Uh, I like that click at the back of your heel. Yeah, I've I've practiced the goofy <laughs> impression. <laughs> I actually did an audition for SNL a couple years ago, and I did a goofy impression. Here it is. <laughs> Gosh, I'm Goofy, and your dear friend Matt has a message for you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. What's your name again? Pretty good, right? I like bills. <laughs> yeah, mine needs work, but yeah. Well, <laughs> gosh, that's our show. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you're frozen. I just like bills. <laughs> you like bills? <laughs> <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> just like I how got could emotional. You? No, yeah. there's nothing. I was just w- listening to you. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I shouldn't no, just no. stare. No, it's okay. I'll look up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, if you want to look up and say that other stuff. Oh, okay. Be curious. <laughs> Keep listening. Because no, no, after all, life that. science and life <laughs> has never been so better. We've met Bill. We like Bill. <laughs> Bill is a friend now. I want Bill to be my daddy. Daddy, please come home. Daddy, here's my hand. Daddy, hold me. <laughs> no, uh... You you're supposed to say that part. But oh, okay. 
Like and subscribe to help the algorithms. Oh, that other <laughs> stuff wasn't even there. <laughs> Be curious. Uh, keep learning, because after all, learning uh, isn't what, Anthony? It's not. It's well, not rocket science. Well, learning is also not important. It, what's important is friendship. Yes. And hook. Gosh. This is my goofy. E Ricola. Ricola. Oh, that's uh, it. Ricola. Needs work. Show. Needs work. But I liked your impression on the SNL. That was good. Thank you. Uh, uh, gosh. Mm-hmm. All right. It's no Bill. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Donald Duck. I was practicing eating. Oh, okay. But it sounded like Donald Duck. <laughs> Tequila. It's not rocket science. Not rocket science. Not rocket science. science. It's not rocket science. It's not. 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 Rocket science. It's not rocket science.